A couple days ago, a friend of mine asked me, Michael, I am brand new to cruising, literally never been on a ship before. I need like three of the most essential things or things that I'm likely to forget on board a cruise. No problem. Happy to help with that one. I've made different uh, lists before of things you definitely want to pack and there are lists all over the internet. But in today's video, I kind of want to go over like three things that you may not have thought of that you probably want to have with you. Again, I'm not talking about like having your passport or bathing suits or formal clothing. That's very standard stuff, kind of moving past the standard stuff here, the things that you you may not have thought of that you, you want. First, some kind of water shoe. Now, I'm not talking about a flip-flop or a sandal. You know, this is a water shoe, specifically meant for walking on the sand and or rocks and other places where your foot's gonna get wet, but it needs to not stay wet, like with a sock, and which would be really bad if just wet socks can't be wearing that. So for excursions, for places that you wanna go, for some excursions I've got planned in the future, having some kind of water shoe is gonna help you a lot because you're gonna be able to walk on those rocks and not you know injure your feet and water just drains out of the bottom as you're walking around. And then you, know, you can just kind of wring it out, make sure that there's no water left in it and walk back to the ship, no problem and then change back into flip-flops or formal shoes or whatever you got that night. Having some kind of water shoe is going to be a really big benefit, especially for those excursions. Now, if you're going to somewhere like Castaway Key or Coco Cay and you're not doing the excursions, then flip-flop or sandal should be fine. But I'm talking about when you're, you're planning on doing more. Like if you're going to go on some very long trek through the wilderness and you know that there's like water parts of it and you're going to be diving in, you may want to have some kind of water shoe in that situation. So first up, water shoe. Next up is a cruise bag. And I know what you're thinking, Michael, I, I have a... I have a bag. You don't need to tell me. I, I, I got you. I'm talking about a bag that you use to take to the beach. Now, this is my string bag. I got it from a friend a little while ago. I love it. I actually have my little uh, clips right here that I use to clip those um, uh, towels to the chairs. Super helpful. A castaway key and all over. But this kind of bag is great for putting something like your water shoe into the bag, right? You're able to walk around with it in the bag. I'm not just talking about like a fanny pack or something like that. In my experience, anyway, you want something that can carry a bit more. Maybe you're sunscreen or your hat or change of clothes in your bag. Having some kind of super light, super flexible, super crump up is that a word? You can crumple it up. crump up I'm going to use that for a minute. Bag is going to be really helpful when you're out and about. This includes excursions, but even someplace like Castaway Key or Coco Cay, you're going to want some kind of bag. Last up, I want to talk about sunscreen. And I know what you're saying, Michael. I, I know to bring sunscreen. What are you talking about? I'm not talking about that kind of sunscreen. I'm talking about some of the more specific ones, especially when you're at Castaway Key you're going to want some sunscreen that includes some way to keep the what's called sea lice off of you. I didn't think I was going to say that, did you? It's a very special anti-sea lice or jellyfish sunscreen that you can purchase. I actually have used all of mine, but you, you can kind of just put a little bit on and then it should help to prevent any sea lice or jellyfish from getting too, too close. The sea lice is the bigger issue there. Jellyfish, they're kind of going to do their own thing, so just avoid them. But sea lice, having some way to kind of repel them just a bit is going to help a lot. Now, in addition, I want to talk about the sunscreen itself. Besides the sea lice sunscreen, I don't use the spray sunscreen that much. If I do, it's it's really not that much, simply because it doesn't work for me. Now, everybody's different. Everybody kind of reacts to the sun differently. But for me, and especially when I'm in the Caribbean or somewhere like that, I need something much stronger. I use SPF 50, usually the Hawaiian Tropic. I really do recommend that one. It's great. It's good for your skin, or better for your skin, better. And you put it on, and I usually put it on maybe, depending if we're a castaway key, maybe two or three times during the day. So you're going to want to have it with you, but something a little bit stronger than just your spray sunscreen. Everybody likes to bring the sprays. I admit it's easier. And for some, maybe that works, but it doesn't work for me. You got to know yourself, especially in the Caribbean. If you're coming from a more of a Northern state in the United States or anywhere else in the world, the Caribbean sun is extremely powerful. You're much closer to the equator. So that sun's going to be extremely intense. Just be ready for it because being burned on board, not the best feeling in the world. Now, in addition, I'm going to add to it, bring aloe vera gel. It's this green gel you can put on if you do get sunburn. I'm going to kind of include that with our sunscreen bit. I know a lot of friends don't think of the aloe vera gel when thinking about going on a cruise. Pack it. Just, just pack it and think about it. Just you'll have it. And you know what? If you have the aloe vera with you, you're less likely to get burned. Isn't that how it works? You know, you have the thing, you're prepared, so it's not going to happen. <laughs> I feel like that's how it's going to work. One bonus one I want to add here is the herbal Dramamine. It's such a Dramamine that I personally really like. It doesn't upset my stomach. It's non-drowsy. It's it's just great. I recommend getting it. You can get it on Amazon or anywhere. It's this herbal one. I don't know why, but that's apparently the better one. It works really well for me. You're going to want to take it in advance of any C 
seasickness? How do you know? Usually the captain will come on and say, oh, we're gonna experience these higher swells tonight, tomorrow, the next day. They'll, they'll kind of let you know in advance, usually. Not always, not always, but usually they'll be able to uh, let you know, which is very, very helpful. Anything more than about, uh, I'd say, probably around five foot swells you're gonna wanna take in advance. For me, I usually start thinking about taking it right around six or seven foot swells. That's when I would start thinking about it. I've been in five, I've been in seven, and right around seven is when I'm, you know, I just, I'd probably wanna have it handy, you know what I mean? And then take it a couple hours in advance, if at all possible. Now, if you could add one thing, and I only mean one, you, you get one thing to add to our special bonus list here. What would it be? Let me know in the comments below to add to your cruise pack list that probably nobody else is thinking of. We'd love to hear it so that we don't forget it on our cruise. Thanks so much for being a part of the magic with me today. Until next time, have a magical day. Bye.